Okay, hi everybody. This is sort of a big picture, long-term overview talk that's going to set the scene for a lot of talks that happen later in the day. Um, firstly, a bit about me. On Wikipedia, I don't edit about military history, and I don't edit about geographical features of the UK. Because people are already doing those much better than me, and there's not much I can do. Um, I edit in psychology and controversial areas where Wikipedia is rubbish. Why? Because the, the marginal effect of me doing good stuff is so much greater. And it's just the same with outreach. So I can honestly say that the cultural work we do with GLAMS, with galleries, libraries, archives, museums, is the jewel and the crown of Wikimedia UK's work. Um, but I think long term, it's only one facet of the way that this charity can create value and the way we can work with people. And so um, I don't do anything to do with GLAMS because there's other people doing it willingly. Uh, so I'm going to concentrate on the other two. So, so the three. As a fan of the radio show on the hour, I insist on calling them the fronty problems of outreach. They're the main themes. Not all that we do, we do software development or internal skill sharing. But basically, we get our hands on cultural stuff, like <coughs> documents or museum pieces. We get experts contributing their expertise, which can be directly or by sharing their research in a way that we can use. Uh, and there's getting learners to contribute as part of an assessed process. So I'm going to talk about the other two. And that's the way I think about it. I don't think we should uh, think in terms of museum outreach, library outreach, university outreach. I think we could be analysing each of the partners that we could work with in terms of those three kinds of things we can do with them. So you can look at university this way. You know, welcome library is mainly a library, but there's an education. The British Psychological Society actually has elements of all three, and so on. And so I'm going to be talking about how we make the case, um, how we persuade these potential partners that it would be very fruitful, very useful to them to be formally working with us. And I say we can benefit Wikimedia UK, we can make Wikipedia and other projects better, and it would be good for the partner organisation. By us, it would be good for the public of the world, more informed public. Everybody wins, and it would be lower cost. And you're probably aware of the economic principle that there's no such thing as a free lunch. But that's a principle that only occurs at equilibrium. It only occurs once we've made our trades and we don't want this, do you want this, you can have this. When something comes along to disrupt, like some technology, and turns costs into benefits, then you can have free lunches. So you've not got the equilibrium. An example is a global information network. So it used to be that it was cheap to share everything with just your friends and very expensive to share it with everyone in the world. Now it's cheap to share something with everyone in the world and very expensive to keep it just to your friends. So economic goods have turned into economic bads. A lot of the services like online repositories or online journals that were about sharing information with the widest possible audience, they're now about restricting it uh, to a particular audience. There's sort of free lunch going on that most people have not invited to the table. Um, so econo technically, we could have now, the open revolution, we could have open access to the archives, culture, of our civilization, available to everyone for free. We could have open access to publicly, all the outputs of publicly funded research, available to everyone immediately for free. We could have open education, uh, educational materials on every topic from most prestigious sources, available to everyone immediately for free. And it's not technical matters or e even economic matters that stop that, it's the policy, the skills, the culture, um, yeah, in a word, culture. So, I want to see what this charity is doing in the big picture of a very gradual cultural change in society as a whole. So, first, the expert outreach. Um, in the early days of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners Lee uh, wrote an article in the Physics World somewhere where Mike Peel and I also published. Um, so, this is 92, the early days of the web. And he said that this mass of information going online would, would just be information overload. It would be hopeless for people. So there'd have to be other things um, added onto the web to make it functional. And one of these was the encyclopedia. So this, this is the decade before Wikipedia started. An overall attempt by the knowledgeable, the learned societies, or anyone else to represent the state of the arts in their field. A living document, as up-to-date as it can be, instantly accessible at any time. I think it's really prescient, but particularly his phrase, the knowledgeable, the learned societies, and everyone else. And I think in the long term it will be that emphasis. At the moment it's anyone and, and 
um, a disproportionately large amount of experts and learned people. But um, gradually, the learned societies will see that, it is, that they do have missions to educate the public at large. If Wikipedia in their area is bad and misleading, it's partly their responsibility, and they need to take responsibility for it. Um, and, and so, yeah, the learned societies and everyone else should be the, the community that's contributing. Um, in Wikimedia, we're, I keep hearing that we don't like top-down solutions. But actually, in working with partner organizations and bringing about cultural change, top-down is great. And an example is um, there's been individual academics asking for open access to research for decades and campaigning for that. This year, it looks like it's happening because the minister and research councils UK and the funding councils of higher education uh, are insisting on if you get public money, uh, you must make all the research outputs available to the public for free and in Creative Commons licenses that are usually Wikipedia compatible. And internationally, that's happening with um, the White House and the European Council. And uh, yeah, if you don't want to publish in this way, you don't have to take the money. And that has a big effect. Like, we are seeing that in the growing torrent of um, content that we can use to improve with media projects. So I'm a fan of top-down in both of these areas. It's not just money that researchers want. They're under increasing pressure to show impact, to show that the research is changing policy, is shaping public debate, is being talked about is, is, uh, in the media. Um, I can think of no more cost-effective way to bring us back than to make sure that there's coverage in Wikimedia projects of their area and their uh, findings. Um, if you want to shape political debate or the media, where do journalists look and where do parliamentary researchers look when they're trying to bone up on the topic? Um, there's uh, so much pressure and money going into um, uh, public engagement with science. So, and, and there are events put on, and there, there are scientists, I've got scientist colleagues, training up as stand-up comedians to do comedy about their research. But there are events where, say, medical researchers go, and I can go along and, and actually talk to an aspirin researcher about aspirin and learn stuff. Great, great for me and a few other people who turn up. But it's not cost-effective. What about engaging and uh, getting responses, critical responses from a wider public? Again, in my experience, there's no simpler, cheaper way to do it than making sure you're visible on Wikimedia, getting the, the topic you know, prominent on Wikipedia, um, because there's all sorts of public discussion which feeds off uh, Wikipedia. There's, I, I'm a fan of the t Today I Learned problem, where people share stuff they learned that's interesting and talk about it, or um, share other facts that are counterpointed. And a third to a half of the things that people discuss on Today I Learned are found on Wikipedia. And then altmetrics might be a new word to a lot of you. Uh, this is the principle that the significance of research is judged by the, the prestige of the journal where you publish it and how many citations it's accumulated after quite a number of years. Now, if we're trying to cut out the, the closed profit-making journals, then those ways aren't going to be sufficient for the new environment. So the altmetrics movement is a movement trying to find ways to assess the impact of research, but by things like um, scholarly social media or more informal uh, social critiques or media coverage or uh, the impact that it has. And I'll turn to Tim Berners Lee. A measure of a paper's standing may be conveyed by the number of links oh, it's away from the encyclopedia. There's like a built in way to measure the significance of a piece of research or a particular paper if the, the scholarly community more formally engaged it. We have what they want, which is that way of assessing it. But this is a barrier. This bit of text is just the big cultural barrier to get credentialed experts who spent years building up qualifications and expertise involved. This is off-putting. And it doesn't fairly capture the ethos of what Wikipedia is about and drives towards. I mean, I've submitted this revised version, which I think is more accurate and captures more fairly what we're trying to do on Wikipedia. Um, I mean, it's sort of a long process to be gone before it gets onto every page of Wikipedia at the top left corner, but wish me luck. Um, but probably not a lot of people know this, but Wikimedia UK all, already has a massive network of contacts with the learned societies. 
So these are all, and it's not even an exhaustive list of places where we have at least one enthusiast. And with a lot of these, we've done events or publications or some sort of collaboration. Um, these, in this list, these are all national or global learning societies with thousands of members, um, or, or their funding bodies. And it's a real trump card when you're trying to persuade uh, academics to get involved. They say, well, we've just got to fulfill the terms of our funding. Uh, well, you say, we've got to do what the funding councils want. And if you say, well, the Arts and Humanities Research Council and the Medical Research Council are working with us in quite a major way, that's, uh, that's quite shocking. Um, yeah, there's a lot more... Um, yeah, there's a lot more things that it could be included in expert outreach, it's just, just a little bit. Um, and in the annual review you've got in your packs, you can read about some of the, so There's been lots of uh, little events, and um, it, as I said, not we haven't done something with all of these champions yet, but they've got to work with internal politics. I don't know, the internal champion isn't always the manager who can make things happen, or the internal champion is the champion of us and other kind of outreach things. Um, there's been a couple of really high-profile, successful things in which I haven't been involved at all. Don't draw the obvious conclusion. Um, and I'll talk a bit about education. Tony is talking about this next, because there's a few things I want to say. There's something called the Wikipedia Education Programme, in which students improve Wikipedia articles during their course and get assessed by their tutor and contribute towards their degree. And it's really kind of unpopular on Wiki because of the disruption of discourse and there's a lot of resistance to it. But there's a lot of, um, a lot of successes of the education program that I think are uncomfortable. And I've used this before in my previous Wiki conference um, presentation, but there are areas of Wikipedia, and I know this especially in psychology, that if you find stuff that's referenced and sort of half decent and based on actual reliable sources. It's probably been put there by a student doing its part of their course. And so um, I was saying in my previous Wiki conference presentation that I had no hope for psychology on Wikipedia because the, the, the growth of, of decent editing is so small and the work to be done is so huge. But educational projects have actually do give me hope. They're, they're, they're changing, they're turning around hundreds of articles and Improve them to a half decent standard. Probably other educational projects can actually then take that article to further improve and through the review process. So the education program is something that is disastrous when it's badly managed and works well when it's well managed, like anything else. So, so it's not reason to be against it in principle. And the lesson I take from it is to evangelize and tell people about the possibilities of the education program, but also tell people it's hard, also discourage people and say, You've got to really commit to it and really plan it, uh, and then only work with the people who show the institutions that show most commitment. Um, and the way you can persuade people in higher education is to show them the list of what we, the skills that we want, what we want people to do in order to make an online encyclopedia. Um, read, restructure, decide what is knowledge, uh, fact check, grammar check rewrite in the original way, collaborate, and then ask them what are they, they trying to do, what skills are they trying to create in degree level education, it's particularly now when there's a lot of pressure to demonstrate transferable skills, employable skills, that you're not just teaching the subject but preparing people for work in a knowledge economy that's globalised. And it's the same list of stuff, so it's the same goals, it's mad not to be working together. So we've had sort of top down and bottom up. We've had more contacts than from the education sector we can deal with, and there's a real sort of explosion of stuff because we're uh, working with different sectors, different subjects, different institutions, at different levels. Um, and we've had favourable coverage in the Times Higher, and uh, we've been invited into research seminars about digital literacy and online education, and that's um, a big step for us towards mainstream acceptance. That uh, research them that will have an academic from another university in and then have uh, somebody from Wikimedia UK. And I want to flag up this that happened earlier this year. There is this residential course put on by the Association of Learning Technology, Higher Education Academy, GIST, National Union Students and Leadership Foundation of Higher Education. And this is a residential course for sort of the heads of teaching and learning from universities 
um, about responding strategically to the new environment of online open learning. And there was a Wikimedia UK session workshop within that course. So we invited in. So that's, that, how's that from top down? Um, yeah, at these sort of events, of course, there's a different buzzword or theory. Years ago, it was uh, reusable learning objects. Everybody was going to make reusable learning objects, and they were going to be the new basic building block of, of the university education. And then it was um, open educational resources, millions of taxpayers' money went into to releasing open educational resources, and then people noticed that didn't make the cultural change. There wasn't the, the change in the sort of bringing remix culture into teaching. That's much more difficult. And so uh, there's this new phase, open educational practice, which is um, uh, trying to capture how a community has remix and reused and shares content. And there'll be another buzzword next year and after that. But these concepts and buzzwords are trying to feel towards what we already do, what we don't, don't even have buzzwords for because it's just the natural way we work as we're comedians with everything open and everything um, based on sharing, remixing, and checking. And this is an area in which we have to professionalise. Because if your students are paying 9,000 a year and uh, they've been set this assignment and they've been told to submit work on Wikipedia and in 48 hours uh, there's, there's the deadline and then somebody's come along to delete all the stuff, they're going to panic and they're going to want to know that somebody uh, credible and such a staff that they can contact. We're really lucky to have half time the best possible person, Dr. Tony Sand, uh, on staff at UK, but having a half time person is comically small compared to the scale of collaboration we could do. As I said, with different levels of education, with different institutions, with different subjects. I want to hear the pitter patter of tiny tenies. <laughs> Whether it's by increase in, uh, in fundraising or, or we get these institutions who will benefit, they will be offering a really challenging and interesting educational experience to their fee paying students, uh, that they should be paying towards um, jointly funded posts to make this happen. So to round up, how do we achieve that change and, make, and, and persuade people? I think it's really important to show professionalism in every aspect of what we do. I think that one of the values of how we work as volunteers anyway. But remember that these researchers and educators, if they've not met us, they have this idea of what Wikipedians and Wikimedians are like. And it's you know, literally a bunch of amateurs. And they're expecting somebody to turn up with a... Um, a sweaty t-shirt coming out of the basement. Um, if you turn up and you exhibit every kind of professionalism, how can I illustrate this concept of professionalism? If you turn up like this looking beautiful, smart, uh, <laughs> nice, nice shirts, confident, bulging genitals nestled in soft coffee, yeah. why are you then, standing in front of it? <laughs> then that sort of upsets that prejudice people have. And so in the, the training for trainers workshops, a, a big chunk of that has been about conveying professionalism in how you dress, how you turn up, how you do your slides and so on. And, and um, maybe people queried why we focus so much on that, but that's such an important skill. Yet the details of the training will come and go. Um, the sort of values we apply will have such a big effect, I think, on whether we do change minds. And it just, just makes people realise Wikimedia UK is actually a thing. It's, it's we're actually serious. But we're not like the other consultants and, and uh, salesmen going into the higher education events because they're saying, install our software and it will revolutionise your learning. Uh, use our online textbook thing and your students will be well motivated. And, uh, and, and we're not saying, we're saying, Here's an opportunity. We don't want to talk money. I'm doing it. I'm doing it as a volunteer. I'm doing it because I, I just think it's a worthwhile thing to do for its own sake. And I'm inviting you to do something that's actually quite hard. Um, and to be honest about the strengths and weaknesses. So professionalism. Go, these things have happened and started off because people just called up and got themselves on the agenda of a university librarians meeting or a university department meeting. I just just made the case and then. Uh, uh, Read, on. Read up about what these people want. How do universities see themselves in different ways? Um, uh, scholarly societies see themselves. What troubles do they face and what do they see as their 
unique so far. Um, explain Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects in terms of the process, process and ethos that drive them, which are very sort of academically orthodox. Don't get them to look at their area on Wikipedia and, and assess it, because it might be really bad, it might be psychology. And be bold, be bold in terms of individuals going and using contacts, um, going having, just talking to people about the office, but let's be bold as an organisation, let's strategically prioritise these two areas in terms of effort and, and uh, staff effort and so on, and everyone will win. Thank you. I think we have time for questions. Any questions? Andy? Uh, two things, neither of which are questions. Oh. Um, one is excellent quote from Tim Berners-Lee. Can't find it online. I'm sure it is, and it's not on Wikiquote, so could you please okay. put that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the second thing is an anecdote, which is I've been doing some work with the University of Birmingham, uh, and once a term I go in and teach a different class each time, but a class of history students to edit Wikipedia uh, as part of their coursework. And two things happen. One is the students ask the lecturer if instead of one of their assessed assignments, which was to deliver their findings to the class, their work on Wikipedia could be assessed, and the lecturer agreed. And the other thing is, I used to teach third-year students, and the lecturer asked me if I would instead teach first-year students, because what I was teaching them about citing references was so useful, they wanted them to know it early on in the course, regardless of it being for Wikipedia or other things. That's great. So I, actually, I think there's a lot of stuff going on in these areas that doesn't get reported on Wiki or that I don't hear about. It's good to just go to the education outreach or, or expert outreach bit of our site and just put in the bullet point because it's just good to have a record. And yeah, the monthly reports that Steam compiles. Um, John? Can you say something about how people can get involved through the education group? Okay, there's an education committee which is sort of in flux, but I sort of, Tony is the person to um, talk to about that, so, um, yeah, the, the, I suppose Tony, you have to be the sort of the central information collecting point, I'm not a very reliable information collecting point. Yes, so, uh, yeah, Tony is the man. Yeah, people should get excited. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's loads of stuff. We have actually so many contacts in both these areas. Actually, so many uh, uh, people wanting to work with us. It's sort of gone beyond uh, the volunteers doing it. So it, it does take. I think you do have to have some knowledge of the education sector or the particular education sector you're targeting, whether it's adult learning or uh, higher education. Um, but yeah, there's there's lots waiting to be done, and uh, if you see on the training area of the wiki, I've, I've, I've devised a, uh, a sort of a campus ambassador training workshop that we could do that could involve Wikimedians and, say, a course leader and teaching assistants. Um, uh, to, and so I'd actually like to deliver that, having designed that, and yeah, it could be a team of Wikimedians going to the institution. Uh, but, uh, and a lot of that is just, just getting on the phone and but the yeah, academics are busy is the first rule of working with academics and difficult to contact them. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things waiting to happen and yeah, it, interesting opportunities for volunteers. Simon. How much do you think we want to get people editing pages directly and how much do you think there's a sort of reluctance to do that that people might uh, where they've shown how to do it, encouraged to do it, engage on talk pages and drafting new articles, because I've, you know, we've talked about <laughs> trying to get people to edit the learning analytics article and it's bloody hard to get people to do it. Yeah. Um, but one of the other things I'd quite like people to start doing is just respond to the things on the talk page, just make suggestions, dump the links there if you want. Obviously, ideally, it's best to put it on the page, but... Um, I think it's important to get across that, that um, Say, editing Wikipedia can be scary, there's cultural stuff. The technical stuff is quite easy, but the cultural stuff is harder to fathom and needs a lot more preparation for. But there are shallow ends. And a good example of shallow end is, is uh, being involved in talk page or even a review. And I think that's how I got involved. I mean, there's three or four years between me learning how to edit Wikipedia and me actually getting involved as a Wikipedia. And it was only when there was an article being reviewed that I was interested in that I got involved. 
Um, and if you look at the education quotient, I don't we have, yes we have, but, 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 but then uh, the educational assignments aren't just writing Wikipedia articles, but they're things like reviewing or illustrating. And I think there will be in the long term a sort of an ecology of different educational assignments in different institutions where one group of students to write an article to a basic standard. Uh, in another institution, there's another group of students working on illustrating it, and then third years, another institution are taking it through um, a review process. And researchers as well, they don't have to write up their field. They could just release stuff in a way that we can use and make it us aware of it, or informally review on talk pages. So yeah, it, it's doing outreach that that stresses there's lots of ways to get involved and there's different levels involved. Hi, I work in the education sector and I was talking just yesterday to someone who suggested that academics who are struggling to get their grant approved, which there's like huge pressure, it would help them if their topic, the thing they're researching, was on Wikipedia. Yeah. Because it would then, the people that review the grant would <laughs> see it's a credible topic. Yeah, there's a big problem on Wikipedia that it's not for original research. So for that sort of application or context, what's your target project? Is it Wikipedia or Wikiversity or, or what? Um, well, most research is advancing a particular topic which already exists. Maybe the concept already exists. and. Um, yeah, because of the thing about secondary and primary sources in Wikipedia, there needs to be at some sort of secondary source. Um, but that's a good, that maybe that's the criterion for, for research that should be uh, given priority for serious funding, that there's already a review. Um, uh, like when you do a PhD, you do a literature review as the first part of that. And so if there can exist a literature review of something, then there can exist serious research on it. Um, uh, there's, very little research, it's completely trailblazing and, and new, and we wouldn't want that to go to Wikipedia first. So, yes, um, it, is, uh, it is feasible to ask researchers to improve the Wikipedia's coverage of their area, not their own research directly, um, and that will have, that's what I was saying about impact and engagement that, uh, yeah, people in power will look up on Wikipedia to, to get across on something. And it is, so it's not... Uh, Although it is something charitable that benefits the public, it's not just a charitable uh, thing. It will I think, help them get funding and help with their careers. Martin, I'm aware that uh, with our relationship with the British Library, um, we, uh, Andrew, set up training with the HRC yep. so that project managers were being trained as part of the funding allocation and the expectations of the funder of, of how that they could address public impact, which is a key deliverable right. for the AHRC. Yeah. It's also, as we know, a key deliverable for, for most funding bodies. Do you think there's a, a way of taking that real positive relationship with the AHRC where we were doing in-house training with the AHRC for researchers who were project managers and paralleling that with other funding bodies? So that in terms of the food chain, yes. that's quite a high yeah. way of approaching a good point because I, um, on, a, on the public wiki, I've uh, put up some stuff for, like, uh, it, it's, it's under the Expert Outreach section, um, Wikimedia as, um, which, uh, as for public engagement in sciences and Wikimedia for public engagement in the arts. And I show this stuff like case studies and advice and stuff, and making this case that actually helps your research your career. And our um, Medical Research Council contact said, you'll have a hard time persuading scientists, but you'll definitely persuade scientists' bosses. And that's in my, because one of my jobs was with a health research project, and I've had the same experience. Um, and yeah, so the boss immediately went over, and the scientists had, uh, but that's why I made the point about top-down can be good. If the funders say, you make your stuff Wikipedia compatible, or you don't get money, that works for us, and that gets, uh, researchers who haven't been thinking about open content or creative commons or these concepts at all in their career, they have to think about it and engage with it now and think about sort of the public consequences of what they're doing. So, yeah, I think that's a really crucial part of what we should be doing and, and yeah, something like that and working with managers and making it part of the process, not making it something outside that you do sneakily. 
the job, but major in the training of uh, the learning and teaching staff in universities and in research management staff and so on. That's extremely interesting. Right. Um, I think we've covered most of the questions. Um, Brilliant, and it's kind of seems almost inevitable now that the technology is here. Um, but I think it's, it's almost like our role in the UK is is to make sure it happens in a reasonable amount of time, yeah. and also to make sure there's not too many kind of forks on the way and a backlash and Absolutely. that sort of thing. Um, so just to give an example, like the um, uh, the metrics thing that you were talking about, and you were alluding to it well with your answers to some of the questions, I can well see a lot of people citing their own papers and creating the whole article to make themselves look good, obviously yeah. in the wrong student. And, and so there's potential for backlash there. In, in that instance, that would be backlash in the wiki media community. And there are other things where now, I think, certain people in academia are trying to cite this thing. So it's, it's, it's how do we, do we have to kind of identify these problems and work out how, how to kind of take on the path? Yeah, so, so conflict of interest is sort of what you're talking about. And yeah, it, it, it happens with yeah. depressing, you know, so there's a case in psychology where a, quite a prominent researcher sort of created a whole load of articles about himself and his research which all kind of had the same content, basically, but just made them seem really important. Mm -hmm. And this is why like, the credentialed experts and everybody else should be working with Wikipedia. Um, it's not just the experts. And so, um, but the prospect of it being recognized as a formal route to impact and a, a thing that's, that's sort of integral to the job of a scientist or a scholar and the, the prospect of there being more actually formal training uh, with it, that, that scientist bosses tell them to, to get trained, and that training would be done in, in a collaboration with us and would include some conflict of interest. Uh, so that's a good thing. Yes, there will be um, uh, scientists contributing really positively and scientists contributing in a really self serving way, uh, but that's the situation we have now. So um, it, it being less of a shameful secret, more of a mainstream thing, is. Good. Isn't it likely, if, if it spreads out through the academic community, isn't it likely to lessen the chance of somebody putting up a puff piece? Exactly. If they're all watching each other, yeah, yeah we've been going to the critical mass. Then, this is what I was saying about Wikipedia could be a tool for measuring impact itself. If, if it's, there's more formal relationship and the, the learning societies were more involved in monitoring what's happening, then it'd be hard, then it'd be more self policing. Yeah. And Morally, they should. I'm not quite sure how we get from here to there, but it, it's a worthy goal, and that's what the case should be making. Is the what's the current approach to um, spreading this idea? Is it pick I on? I bet this is the last question I raised. Okay. Pick on a number of really important organisations and get them on board and doing it, so that the others then go. Ooh, yeah, so and so is doing, or are we trying to just you know, spread it virally? Getting, um, fostering a load of contacts and working for finding out what they want and what they get, and they sort of progress in different ways, and then building towards high profile things. And uh, I say the things which I, I jealously say I wasn't involved the uh, Ada Lovelace Day and the World War One editor, where in fact they achieved a lot, they got lots of coverage, and they're concrete examples or experts and Wikipedia working together, um, and then write those up and publicize them, and people will get jealous. So, it, so our, our Expert Outreach program basically started with the, the Council of Research UK, getting in touch with Mike Peel and saying, can you come, come in and train us? And then that got a lot of publicity, got a very favorable write-up from the Times about how it was, it was empowering cancer sufferers to choose their treatment and so on. And then um, other bodies, like the Medical Research Council, saw the media coverage and were jealous and said, well, now can you come in and train us? And that's the jealousy is the yeah, most big thing. So, so high profile things and then write them up and share. I think that's it for me, but thank you all very much.